wow, they actually found a solution. You gotta give that to them. You know, they 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 found a solution. That's that's something. Oh, <laughs> things are in motion. Let's go. You may remember that for over a decade, Germany pushed away the decision of replacing Tornado in the Luftwaffe, specifically Tornado IDS and Tornado ECR, which are the strike and electronic warfare variants. It is a story which you can catch up on in my video series. I've linked them in the description for you. Then in 2022, Germany announced that it would buy 35 F-35s on top of 38 Eurofighter Tranche 4 and 15 Eurofighter ECRs. And that's the electronic warfare variant of Eurofighter. This is then to substitute roughly 70 Tornado IDS and 30 Tornado ECRs that are currently in the fleet. The only problem with this plan? There was no electronic warfare variant of Eurofighter. Eurofighter ECR raised a lot of heads, including myself. You know, people criticize the decision on the basis that there is no market for this that development will take too long, that it's too expensive, that the decision comes way too late, and that it is unclear what this aircraft would even look like, and that 15 aren't enough. However, replacing Tornado ECR with an electronic warfare variant of Eurofighter uh, comes with some advantages as well. You have parts commonality with the Eurofighter fleet, of course. You have the existing logistic infrastructure. You have familiarity with the aircraft for crews and maintainers. And then of course you have also the aspect of strengthening the home industry and potentially having an influence on FCAS, well the SCAF, sort of French, uh, German, sixth gen aircraft that's in development, sort of. Also it would strengthen the NATO air electronic warfare package that is right now still reliant or heavily reliant on uh, Tornado ECR and Growler. There's a bit of Rafale in there, I guess. And yes, Gripen can be added now as well, more or less. Uh, Lockheed Martin, of course, wants to go that route as well with the F-45, but that falls outside the scope of this video for now. But in any case, Germany launched a project to test the viability of different approaches to creating Eurofighter ECR, rechristened Eurofighter EK. That's German and stands for Elektronischer Kampf electronic warfare. And now we know exactly what it's going to look like. Let's do big picture first. At the end of November 2023, Airbus announced that it had partnered with Saab and Northrop Grumman to develop Eurofighter EK. This is interesting, as these companies are outside the scope of the Eurofighter consortium, but it's also not necessarily surprising given the equipment and the systems that are out there. Now, if you spoke to people in defense before this, they would be like, yeah, yeah, we're kind of expecting this to happen. And I also personally got an early look at this on a recent research trip. Big thank you here, of course, to all the patrons and the channel supporters that make those trips possible. And then this cooperation started to be really heavily teased openly for a couple of months now. And there was also a governmental process that was rolling, uh, which has now been approved via the German Bundestag, so the Parliament's Budgetary Committee, which means that Eurofighter EK is as official as it can get at this stage. But there still has to be a governmental order for now, which is, well, which is supposed to come in before the end of the year. So how is it going to look like if that order does come in? First off, Eurofighter EK is the EW analog to Eurofighter that Growler is to Super Hornet. What it does is to take the existing aircraft and integrate new systems into it. And those systems, of course, specialize on electronic warfare. Saab has a system called Arexis for electronic warfare that was introduced on Gripen. Broadly speaking, the system comes in three parts. There's the hardware, partitioned into onboard systems and a jammer pod, as well as the software. Though initially a jammer pod was often shown with Eurofighter EK, in the official announcement and the concept art that Airbus shares, I don't actually see it. And yes, those are fuel tanks. From what we can see and can read, the main systems may be limited to those onboard emitters. Fitted with radar warning receivers and gallium nitrate cooled AESA transmitters, this system can detect enemy radar signals, 
both from an offensive and defensive standpoint and benefit from ultra wideband receivers as well as digital radio frequency memory. So gallium nitrate can tolerate very high temperatures, which means that high power signals can then be pushed through the appropriate models resulting in an overall better system performance. And then ultra wideband receivers are better for detection of weak signals hiding behind background noise. And finally, a digital radio frequency memory sample incoming radar signals, and then also alter them before they are transmitted back to the targeted radar. And that allows you to deceive the radar. Now it must be mentioned here that in the official press release for Eurofighter EK, what I am seeing is not necessarily uh, that much emphasis on electronic attack in terms of the systems that are on board. So while theoretically Arexis, the system that is provided by Saab, does have an electronic attack component, the official press release only mentions a transmitter location and self-protection system from Saab and nothing necessarily specifically detailing it being able to deceive or uh, spoof enemy radar sets and only mentioning the anti-radiation missile for an attack component, which is quite interesting. Now it is possible that a jammer pod will also be added in the end. I'm just not sure about that at this point. That would also beef up the attack component of Eurofighter EK, and this pod operates mainly in the L and the S band. The software aspect is done in cooperation with Saab's partner Helsing and features buzzword alarm AI. Now I'm not gonna to speculate too much about this AI integration, but to give you an idea of what this may entail and what it is sort of used for, it is a machine dominated evaluation of electronic signals that go through multiple different sensors and then they are analyzed and they're used to store patterns, differences, assess the variations, the changes, and then it also draws on existing mission libraries and thereby it presents up-to-date and targeted situational awareness pictures to the pilot. And this is really the critical part in all this AI integration. It does this at data volumes and within a time frame that would be impossible for a human to process. And then it distills that information into the exact situational awareness picture that the pilot needs. At least that's the theory behind it. With this, Eurofighter EK is to be equipped with a modern, and capable EW system. So you have you know, AESA radars that allow it to jam and deceive radar sets, uh, even ping multiple radars in sequence. Uh, you have the onboard systems to assist you to counteract enemy missiles. And all this data gets stored and processed in real time without occupying the operator that is actually flying the machine. Northrop Grumman also adds the advanced anti-radiation guided missile to the package. This is an upgrade to the earlier AGM-88, the so-called HARM missile, and it has extended range to neutralize radar sets. As such, Eurofighter EK will be able to fulfill the seed and deed role, if you make a distinction between those two, so that's suppression of enemy air defenses and destruction of enemy air defenses. And that of course means that you can, yeah, well, suppress and destroy enemy air defenses by taking out their radar observation. It is actually good to see that the steady progress is being made here on Eurofighter EK, as one of the main fears was that Germany would be stuck in another procurement loop for a number of years. And the solution of turning to Saab and Northrop Grumman is also consistent with the German current priorities to buy existing systems rather than jump into lengthy development cycles on their own. However, it must also be said that due to the limited attention that EW has had over the last few decades for NATO, that we can of course ask if there really were any alternatives to this setup in the first place. There are a few of them, but this really is one of those packages that was sort of an obvious solution to this issue. There are a few open questions, and I'll go from the low end to the big picture ones. First off, the jammer pod, air launch decoys, stand in jammers like Spear EW, or a new main radar set. Will these be added to Eurofighter EK? As far as I don't understand it from the press releases, I don't think so, but we will see. Then for the Luftwaffe, the 15 Eurofighter EK will be refitted aircraft that are not a separate production, at least based on a governmental statement from October this year, so 2023. I doubt we will see a new order soon, but considering that I think the initial assumption was that these EW aircraft would not draw on an existing pool of aircraft, I thought, you know, I'd share that little nugget. Then we have to see if the governmental order goes out still this year or not, as far as I understand it. Uh, the allocation of these funds is also not subject to the German uh, 
uh, where you might have heard as this German constitutionally set budget limitations and so on and so forth, but it's not part of that. Um, but if the video does go out after the order is submitted, I will pin a comment, so have a look out for that. Um, timelines are interesting as well. So how quickly can Airbus integrate and certify these new systems? And generally, I would say for a weapon system, this can be between one to three years. But since this is quite an extensive revision, we will see how long that takes. There are, of course, some positive signals in Germany that things are changing. So maybe there is also a higher tempo now behind us. And then operationally, it will be interesting to see how Eurofighter EK will take on its role within the Luftwaffe and NATO. Uh, that's something really to keep an eye on. And then a big question is, will any other Air Force use Eurofighter EK? I'm leaning towards a no with European Eurofighter operators. The RAF has recently already pitted to EW a little bit with the AESA radar changes for Trans 3. The other non-European operators of Eurofighter, well, they're a little bit more of a wildcard, but it also depends whether it's allowed to be exported to them. And then does this have an influence on FCAS? So could we potentially see a system like this or an adaptation in the Franco-German 6th Gen project? Right now, I think that's unlikely, but stranger things have happened. Um, that would also constitute a stronger Swedish integration into the development of FCAS. And Sweden, of course, took a step back from Tempest, so the, so the uh, competition to FCAS that was developed by the UK, Italy, and also now Japan. And it still has to make a decision whether it wants to join another program or go back to Tempest or develop something by themselves. So we will see where that goes. So to sum up, it is still early days for Eurofighter EK. So we will see what news emerges in the coming weeks and months, of course. But things are in motion. Big thank you here to you, the community, for watching and especially, of course, the Patreons and channel members for supporting this channel and making all those research trips that go into this content possible as well. Additional thank yous go out to the people who know who they are as well as Andrew for his help on the script. As always, I wish all of you guys, as always, I wish all of you a great day and see you in the sky.